into um, the outline to our Māori synthesis strain framework and plan, um, and we uh, I've been kindly reminded that uh, we haven't done that yet. And you knew that? Come on. Hey. Well, supposed to have my back on this stuff. That's fine. Hey, could I encourage you all to uh, to come back to the stage and we'll complete this last bit. Then we'll go over to Anaru and he can provide our reflections on the day. Us again. Us again. It's the Kelly and Wayadia show today. Okay. We, oh, there's the words again. Okay. We thought we didn't have time, so now we do. Good news for you. Okay. Here we go. So, you may be wondering what is our Māori synthesis? <laughs> well, I'm here to tell you what it is. <laughs> okay. So um, I think first, before I get into it, I just want to mahi to our matapuna, to Waiaria and to Dede, and also to you for um, sticking with us through the first session that we had on the program. Now we're into the less fun part where I just talk to you. Um, but it is important <laughs> for us to know a little bit more about what te ao Māori synthesis is, First of all, you've heard these words kind of thrown around. And like Dede pointed out, we were doing synthesizing as an example of um, a collective effort to bring together knowledge. And I think for Te Ao Māori or for Te Ao Tūroa synthesis, as it has become known, these are the key objectives that our team, inclusive of our mātāpuna, um, are seeking to bring forward. So. We want to have collective impact, and we want to do that through understanding the insights and learnings for te ao Māori, in te ao Māori, um, and in te ao tūroa. We also want to create space for the Māori voice to be heard. So when you traditionally think about synthesis, you, you know, you might talk to um, the researchers, you might read their reports, and then kind of bring together some facts about what they did. Uh, what we want to do is create space to hear the voices of the people, and I think we've had, it, we've had the privilege of hearing some of those voices today, um, which has been really awesome for our kaupapa. And uh, we want to bring more of those voices from the ground, from the moana, from under the water, up to the surface, te ao o te moana. Um, and then future thinking, like what is, where to from here? We've had 10 years of challenge research, and a lot of it has been... Um, not necessarily focused on Te Ao Māori, but what has been focused on Te Ao Māori, what is it showing us about where we're pointing to? And I think the session that we had earlier, <laughs> the previous session that you may remember me from, um, talked to those kinds of things and signposted some of those things. So, you may have seen these words on some of our slides and some of the programs of research today. This is the framework that we are using to ground and to embed the findings and insights from all of the various Te Ao Māori, Kaupapa Māori research into the synthesis. And there's a funny looking human doing the splits and holding up the sky there um, in the middle. That guy is us, and it is not that we're the centre of this universe, but it is that we are responsible to all parts of this universe. And I think you've heard that multiple times today, so I won't kind of keep banging on about that. The top one, wao atua. Um, Wai talked about it, Rere talked about it. Wao atua are those physical um, primal manifestations of our atua and the source points of Modi. Without them, we don't exist. And they exist without us. And COVID showed us that. When we got out of the way, wao atua sorted itself out. <laughs> and then we came back. Um, Wao tupuna is a reference to the knowledge spaces, those kōrero tukuiho, the karakia, the waiata, the ways that we transmitted knowledge and the wisdom that sits in those spaces. And while tangata is our physical, actionable practices that we carry out in wao atua in accordance with wao tupuna. And you can't have one of these without the other in a functioning system sitting around the edges of those. And we've gone into Modi and we've gone into Whakapapa, so I'm not gonna talk about those, but the concepts that we had discussed in our previous session sit around the outside of this. 
Down the bottom there we have Ao Tūroa. Ao is um, a kupu that's often used to refer to the earth or the world. Tūroa is to be long-standing is the common description of how that is um, translated, but it is, it is a continuous, regenerative um, world, right? We don't actually want sustainable, we want regenerative. We don't want to sustain the stink status quo that we have now. <laughs> oh, do you? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I want a regenerative world that has all of this functioning because we know it can exist. Our Waltupuna tells us so. Our Whakapapa tells us so. So we're looking to, just quick recap, in case you didn't catch all of it. Space, while Atua is space. While Tupuna, intergenerational wisdom. While Tangata, grounded and responsive practice. Modi, the energy and constant flow, movement and balance. A, com uh, a concept that Matua Mark talked about, balance. Um, Layer, uh, whakapapa being the layers of knowledge, connection and understanding, and pao are the foundations of a regenerative living world, with us responsible to all of these spaces, but not all important. Kapoi, so that's our framework for te ao synthesis. And what we're looking to do is utilise four activities to draw insights from the te ao Māori projects in the challenge, in the phase two of the challenge, um, into that framework. And so I'm just going to quickly go over the four activities in Te Ao Māori Synthesis. Um, starting at the top, we've got a lovely, handsome young man you may recognise from the previous session. And his activity is Te Ao Tūroa. You may say, hey, but what, Te Ao Tūroa's over here. Yes. Te Ao Tūroa is that whole framework. Um, and Te Rereko, whose job in this activity is to draw through the insights and learnings around the principles and practices um, that have been brought forward in the challenge to help us to flesh out the parts of this framework with what we've learned over the last few years. Also importantly, to look at the ways that our tūpuna organised themselves in order for that system to work. Uh, Taurahere, led by this beautiful young lady over here, Wayari Ramika. Do you want to talk about your one? Okay, no, I'll do it, cool. Tauda Hire is an activity that looks at research practice, um, at kaupapa Māori principles and practices, but also what's past kaupapa Māori. Um, you know, we are an evolving system of research and kaupapa Māori is not the end point. Of course, it is a wonderful space to start, but we can go past that. So what practices, methodologies, um, have come through in the, the work that you've heard about today um, that present us with a new starting point. Okay. <laughs> uh, waka taurua, um, it's not a spelling mistake, okay? I often get asked if it's supposed to be haurua, but it is not, it is taurua. And this description come from, don't like throw tomatoes at me, but Elson Best, um, where he described two waka that were otherwise separate at all times, coming together for a common purpose, and that purpose in his description was to lay a large seine net which would otherwise not be able to be laid out with one. So, for us, we want to understand what, what our waka looks like separately, because we always start with us lashed up together. So, we want to understand what does a prepared waka look like apart from that intel tūroa? And what examples are there in the challenge of a successful waka taurua where we've come together? And that is not necessarily a Māori and a Pākehā waka. In our research projects, they are two Māori waka. We are the research team and we've worked with Māori whānau. We are all Māori, so it's not a Māori and a Pākehā one. So a waka taurua doesn't have to be particularly that. It's just where are there examples where two different waka have come together? Okay. And two hono hono. Now, this activity, um, oh, you may notice there's only one person on the corner of both of those, so I've got a choice job <laughs> of doing two activities. Um, the two hono hono activity is looking to understand the breadth, depth and scope of impact that the research the challenge has funded has created in communities in our hapu, in our iwi, in our marae spaces, in our whānau, in our atua spaces. Um, so one, we want to understand what that looks like, what has been achieved for our whānau 
according to their voices, not according to us as researchers saying, we did this wonderful stuff. We want to hear what the whānau believe is the wonderful stuff, if, if there was some. <laughs> um, and then we want to also be able to create um, opportunities for that impact to be built upon and to be complemented. Um, and what have I got there? to share the learnings from the challenge more broadly. And I think that's the point of synthesis, and you've heard the same kind of concept come through yesterday, and I'm sure it will be a concept tomorrow. So um, those are our activities. And through those activities, we're going to be able to draw the learnings and understandings and insights into that framework in the centre. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're actually interested in this, but this is our timeline. <laughs> Last year in June, we engaged with our mātāpuna, who you've met. Um, and we worked to develop the framework that we've shown you. And hopefully you can kind of recognise that the Waiata session and the panel session has been helping to bring you along on the journey of the framework without actually talking about the framework until now. <laughs> um, and so that was a big mahi for us and our mātāpuna last year. And so then we arrived the start of this year, and over the course of the first three months of this year, we've gone into a wete wete, or a refinement phase, where we've approached kaupapa within the challenge um, through their project leaders um, in the first instance to ask if they have any additions, any refinements, and if they would like to engage in the rest of the synthesis program with us. So that's been completed, and we are about to send out a pānui with a questionnaire to see if those people and those projects would like to um, kia uru mai ki roto ki tēnei synthesis kaupapa. Um, and, and then as we move on into the rest of this year, we've got the whakatīnana where we will go through the process of working through those activities, and that'll be through a combination of online and in-person wānanga. And then next year, our job as the kaimahi of this kaupapa is to bring all of those learnings into usable, tailored, fit for purpose, and intentional whakahua. <laughs> um, so I guess products or events. So we are talking about the likes of wānanga. Um, of course, there will be some sort of reporting, which is our choice as job that we love, um, but also looking to build our practitioners because I think you, oh, well, I hope that you have heard today how important it is for succession to occur in our practitioners. They are so important and have for too long not been considered in the space. So, koina, that's us. Kapai, you are relinquished from listening. <laughs>